Welcome back, everybody, here to your coverage of The Defense. I'm Toby One, joined by the wonderfully, if I hit my right button correctly again, the wonderful Blitz. We are here for this tournament, The Defense. That's what we're doing. We're about to load into the game. A whole new series, a whole new place where there are no pauses. It's you, th you think that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> somebody there. Yeah, yeah, we're 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 hearing Tim through the window, uh, which we have open, but uh, he's out in the balcony. Either way, <laughs> let's let's not get completely distracted. Uh, we're almost loading into the game. We're actually waiting for our last little broadcast to load in now. Um, and two new teams, two new teams coming their way. It's nice to see Crip playing in a team again. That guy, really good Dota player, really young too. Yeah, I think they lost yesterday, right? Two zero, uh, or one one. To be honest, I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. I don't actually know what their score right now is in the defense, but uh, Golden <laughs> Boys, pretty good team. Like Madara, we saw him go pretty ham at uh, what was that event that we were going? MLG. Yes. Right? MLG Texas, where they beat ML or EEG in that best of one, and he played really well in that Phantom Lancer. Uh, but Monkey Business has a pretty I want to say star-studded. Like, they've got a lot of players that have played at internationals. You know, you got Fly from Fnatic and re very recently Complexity. They did very well. They mm -hmm. overperformed, in my opinion. Uh, you've got Miracle, who a lot of people are hyping because he's 8K. Yep. You've got Moon Meander, of course. Uh, big Daddy No Tail is the big name here. Radiant I think he's actually back. playing Core now or something like that. Really? He's playing number one position? I can't remember. I don't know if it's the one position. <sighs> well, we're going to find out tonight anyway, but... I got, I'd assume Moon Meander's going to be into that. Wait, mm. Wouldn't he be number one? No, he plays. He played three most recently. Okay. For complexity. Okay. Uh, I guess it just depends. I'm trying to think right now. Fly is definitely supporting. Yeah. With crit. That's his thing. Yeah. I think that's the way it goes. And then I think Miracle plays one or two. Uh, Big Daddy mm. No-Tail plays one or two. Okay. We obviously did our homework before we came in to, to cast this game. There's just so many new teams to keep up with, and people there keep really changing is. roles. It's it, it was one of those things I remember when uh, like like with the older roster shuffles. It's like you know what I'm gonna look at this when everyone's done. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna try and keep up with it as it goes on day by day because day by day is like well the rumor is this and the rumor is that saying like well I'll just formulate some thoughts about this team because they got all these people in it. It's like well actually no I have to change all my thoughts because now this person's in it instead. And one one Five one person changing the roster just changes everything, normally. Yeah, I think a big part too is just people are just messing around, making sure that they know what roles are good. Mm -hmm. With the majors coming up so quickly, and yeah, the, the the qualifiers are not far away. Yeah, and you've got all of these big events coming up. You know, we've got our defense land, we've got ESL, MLG. There's just so many different things that we have to do at once that mm -hmm. teams kind of have to find out. 10 times yep. faster than they used to. But on the bright side, there's a, there's a crab ton of tournaments that they're involved in, which they can do that with. Like here at the defense, we know we've had a lot of people watching our games here because they're looking to see what these teams are capable of. And these teams are looking to see if they can actually find a competitive environment to test it out as well. So. I'd be so scared if I was every other team that wasn't EG or maybe VP. Really? Okay. I just think that uh, they're not, there's not enough time to like buy the first major. Mm -hmm. to like really shore things up yep. or even maybe even by ESL or MLG uh, these teams have to like get going quickly like yep. there hasn't been a real standout team for me yet like a team that you're pointing to that's like that's a real contender like they can yeah. actually win an entire tournament like yeah, you might have thought it was Cloud9 and then uh, DC does Great. what they did last night and you realize just like yeah the field is so muddled right now yeah and, and really like Cloud9 looked fantastic they won like 9 games in a row 11 I think uh, their first 11 or something I think it was a it was a really it, it nice was, streak. It was, it it was, was a, a good, good streak. streak. It was a good yeah. streak. We could agree on that. Um, yeah, and then they just get shut down. You're like, wait, what the? Uh, um, damn it! Like, Rares were lost, and like Faith was lost. Uh, but and monkey business. They've got remain. that combo, <laughs> that flame guard ion shell combo. That is classic. The Darkseer pickup. I've seen this guy so many times in almost every single game I've been casting. The Darkseer has appeared. He just seems to be so perfect on lane. He wins the one-on-one -on -one duel with support that tries to zone him out the off lane. And if you do it, then commit more to him, he just goes into your own jungle and farms it up. Like, and, and he only has to do like maybe a, like a triple stack or quad stack, which the support can work in for him. 
And then he can move to the top lane with a level 3 Iron Shell and then hold the lane back or just keep farming. Make life a living hell for these like low range attack um, number one positions to just try and free farm the safe lane. That's a really em early Ember Spear pickup too. Like you never, you very rarely see it in the first two, just because uh, the hero is a little predictable, and it's easy to work a strategy around it. Mm -hmm. Like Golden Boys immediately take the Lena and the Gyrocopter. Like the Gyrocopter is so good against pretty much every offlaner. Rocket Barrage is what a spell, honestly. You don't really lose with that ability. Yeah. I don't. I guess what it'll really come down to is if Monkey Business can just outplay them. But Golden Boys has been looking all right, too. Uh, they had a little bit of a rougher run earlier tonight. Oh, really? Versus who? Uh, that was their MLG, MLG, MLG game. Yeah, yeah, they had their MLG game where they got 0 2 uh, against Vega. But Vega might be Vega might be a top five team for me right now yeah. with how they look. They're just beating everybody. Well, you, you put VP into the list. Vega was always up there. But they had... They had problems, to put it nicely, but still, compared to all these teams that are newly forming, Vegas still got a lot of stability behind them. Oh, for sure. Their yeah. play style is more or less fleshed out is probably the important thing. It's like what PPD said, right? Like, Digital Chaos didn't have a plan. Well, Vega always has a plan. Like, they stick yeah. to their guns. VP just might beat them, edge them in the talent department is yeah. where I find the biggest difference. Yeah, I kind of feel like VP, also with their planning, uh, it's a little bit more precise for yeah. the timings. Where Vega's a little bit more, you know what, we just push. This doesn't work. Phase two now starts. <laughs> like, there's no exact timing plan. No. All right, so Monkey Business ban out the Tusk. They got one more to go. They, the weird thing is about the offlane pool now, it's like you're either Clockwork, Darkseer, Earthshaker, or Tusk. And we've seen Tusk banned out, Darkseer taken. Mm -hmm. So now if Monkey Business want to ban one of the two or they leave just both open exactly. because they realize it's impossible to ban out the offlane position yeah but i was talking to a lot of players at the red bull event that we were just recently at and they said those are like the four main ones and then there's like a pretty precipitous drop off after that yeah yeah and we just have like random heroes like we saw in the last game which was like broodmother offlane you're like okay this became a thing i would kind of like to see uh i kind of would have liked to see the clockwork ban if i was golden boys because I think Clockwork does quite well against both Gyrocopter and Lina. Mm -hmm. I guess it just depends on the direction that you want to take with the draft. But those are the two heroes that I would personally like to see. It'll be nice to get that initial control, then the follow-up blast. Yeah. And Monkeys will take it out, and they go for the Earthshaker. So they actually block one of them by being picked, by picking it themselves, and they just block it the old-fashioned nice. way. <laughs> so they got rid of all four. We yep. just talked about the four offlaners. Yep. And they just did the job. Every single one. That's so smart, though. Like, yeah. I was like, oh, they should ban the clockwork because there's also the air shaker. But then they just... No. Oh. So then you <laughs> you have you have the second pick. Or the, you have the first pick in the second phase. It's why not? That's a wonderful block. The question will now be, like, seconds. are you running an, uh, a roaming uh, shaker? An ember spirit, potentially Five safe or potentially mid, uh, depending on what matchup favors him better. And then the darks here off lane. Reserve time. Uh, you, that's nice. That's def That's generally the way it's going to go. Yeah. At this is, rate, I could foresee the Ember Spirit being a mid for the control factor. Is the Ember still going to be fine up against the Lina? Eh, nothing is really... That's what the players make of it. I mean, <sighs> Fire Hands is pretty hard to beat mid. Like 670 range, spammable nukes, a free Hyperstone and free Haste Rune. Uh, did, the hero's did, amazing. Did, did you really just call her Fire Hands? Yeah, OS Frog Fire Hands. <laughs> Didn't you hear Zai one time? No. He said, you can just create your own memes, Toby. <laughs> he said, I just make my own memes up. Just like, Darkseer is Purple Cone Man. Ember Spirit is... Is he the balanced spirit, or is that Storm? I can't remember. Storm is not balanced. Yeah, but it's sarcasm. Uh, in ranking of OP spirits, though, it definitely goes Earth, Storm, Ember. Yeah, but there's a reason why Earth Spirit's not in Captain's yeah. mode. Because of that exact reason. I always read threads where people are like, <laughs> Earth Spirit's not that bal or is not that imbalanced. <laughs> and I go through their comment history. It's like 2.5k bracket. I'm like, that's... Earth Spirit is... I... What? <sighs> I, I, I actually cannot believe how hard Magnetize is to fight around. Like, it's, it's impossible. No, you can't, you can't beat that. Yeah. 
Imagine if you gave Earth Spirit that ultimate. That would make it such a fun hero to play. If instead of, you know, the fire remnants, instead of TPing to it, it's just like the stones. He just shoots fire there. No, I still think it should be possible where you break the stones. With like four attacks or something? Yeah, something like that. Like yeah. You can even do it with Ember Spirit to balance him out a little bit too. So you just like take out... The fire the, remnant? The, you, you can take out the fire remnant. So it can't just, like, you can't just have a fire remnant sitting in Roshan. You're like, well, I want to go for Roshan. I've got like everything I need to kill off Roshan, apart from that one bloody spirit which I cannot remove in the game. Just sitting there. Remaining. Yeah, but all three spirits have that. Like Storm's got the remnant that you can't get rid of unless you walk Five over it. Yep. Remaining. I guess you can walk over it. Yeah. But it's like a... It and, then, th and then it removes. But the, re the remnant works a little bit differently. Like, Storm, I feel, is still balanced in that way. We got so off topic. We really did. Draft. We really, really did. Uh, it looks like we're running a, uh, a, um, a safe lane Ember Spirit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, who says we're off topic, Storm? Uh, Storm, I just call you Storm instead of Blitz now. Haha. <laughs> you got me, Toby. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, we're on topic because we still get the Storm Spirit pickup. And Storms have been trashing in so many games. Like, that Bloodstone build, like, the momentum you gain is just ridiculous. There was actually a, uh, a Storm Spirit Coddle that was played recently. So he'd jump in, have his little bit of a battle, and then TP back to base, and then gets recalled back in again, jumps in, gets Chakra so he can then fight again, and then by that point he's ready to TP back to base, and they just kept doing it over and over again. Yeah, I mean, Storm is fantastic against all the heroes that Monkey Business have. Uh, the Dazzle pairs up really well with it. Mm. Like the Weave plus Storm being able to zip in from distance. Uh, the Gyrocopter. Ten seconds I think that's... I have to assume then that's a support Lina, and they kind of just faked out Monkey Business a little. Remaining. Yep. With picking the Storm too, you can't put the Ember mid anymore. The matchup is just... Team it's not impossible for the Ember to win that one. Interesting they banned out the SK. So I see here the PPD and I, PPD and I were talking about uh, yesterday as far as like off laners. Where, like you start to run out of options. Yeah, like, that's the fifth like, one. It's, it's like, what, what do I really do? It's like, well, I want a hero that can give me a sun, can give me initiation, and potentially farm up my own jungle if things get rough. It's going to be... SK fits it perfectly. You notice that monkey business have been really strategic and smart with their bans. Yep. They ban four offlaners. They take one of their own, and then they take the other one as a support. I think Golden Boys has to go in the direction of... Uh, I think Beastmaster is still a pretty decent option, actually, this game. Like, yeah. Beastmaster is actually really solid here. Uh, the vision that it would give you so that they couldn't remaining. just go for the Dire Roshan. Like, this would be a la... What is that team? Um, Five seconds remaining. MVP. Mm -hmm. MVP picked the, used to pick the Beastmaster a lot for March for this reason. Reserved so, Golden Boy is going for the Beastmaster. I actually think would be... Oh, and that Silencer Please makes life hard for everybody. Yeah, the king of the bee. Uh, things, word. <laughs> What? Huh, I, I censored myself before I actually finished it. Uh, Silencer is not on my on my happy list. Yes, and I got it right. The Blitz prediction. We haven't done the proper Blitz prediction in a very long time. Remember that time. time I guessed that Omni? Man. Yeah, that was pretty epic, man. That was. I don't. I just don't get given enough opportunities. Uh, remember, like, we used to do the Blitz prediction. Like the Blitz prediction was you'd see the entire draft, and then you'd call like a five minute window when the game would be won and by who. Yep. That was the Blitz prediction game. I was real good at that, too. I, I, I almost want to make a game just called the Blitz prediction and just see how close to Blitz you can get. I'm not, I'm not handsome enough to be the main Merlini, and I'm not smart enough to be the small Merlini. So I've just got to be me. So who wins this game and what time? Do we start the Blitz prediction again? Um, I don't know. Just judging by lineup, seconds remaining. I think that... If Golden Boys are going to win, it's going to be fairly early. Like, if they win the laning phase, I could see them winning this in, like, 30 minutes. But if Monkey Business can really outlane them and get a good start without getting ganked up, yep. then I think they can win in, like, 45 minutes. They're probably going to have to go for at least two Roshans, so 45, 50 minutes. So you're talking about GB winning 40 to 45 minutes in? No, I think GB will end faster if they're going to win because they'll just mm. snowball. True. It is going to be a no-tell Ember Spirit. I knew the only reason they pick it first, too, he's been practicing it, like, nonstop. I saw really? Chessie play with him a few times with it. Yeah, he's been playing it a lot recently. It's also kind of funny that we get, like, the same cause two games in a row now. Like, Ember and SF 
being the two guys that end up coming in as like the two cores. Like, is this now going to be a thing? But the laning phase is still great for them. The only concern I kind of have for monkeys is if the laning phase doesn't work perfectly for Mumiander, um, is the fact that that jungle is going to get very, very crowded. Very, very early. I also love, too, the fact that no tell was the man pinging that. <laughs> he's just he's just telling Mumiander, it's like, I want it right here, like right here in that position. So he takes all responsibility for that ward getting dewarded. All right, so this this Ember didn't go stout. I think that's in response to just being able to get the Ring of Aquila really quickly. Uh, crit and Fly. They're going to have a pretty rough job this game trying mm -hmm. to zone and get their own levels because that's the issue is that both these are both really level-dependent supports. Like, that's the downside is if your laning phase doesn't go well, suddenly you've got, like, a level 4 Earthshaker and, like, a level 3 Silencer. Yep. Silencer might be one of the more ulti-reliant supports in the game. Because this toolkit just isn't very good for other purposes. Yeah. But at the same time, if they can find a couple of early pickups and the Silencer starts stealing intelligence, um, your momentum can be absolutely unstoppable. I think you have to go Yules as a storm this game. The battle begins. Global Silence is just... I really, really don't advocate going for Yules as an item. I think it stops your snowball quite a bit. And it makes you ineffective at places y where you want to be. You're saying Yules before you get into um, Bloodstone? Uh, maybe Bloodstone into Yules. The first suicide you can waste for a global. It's probably not that bad. Okay. But I think eventually in this game, a BKB would be really smart too as a second item. If you want to skip the Yules altogether. It's like maybe he's going to keep that range creep back on the bottom lane. But this is going to be... Actually, a little bit difficult for Mumiander. That uh, that dark creep waves up a little bit too fast. So he's not feeling safe. And in fact, they actually hit the light strike array and a full rocket barrage to remove two thirds of his life. Well, there's Earthshaker. Crit's waiting. Now, vision wise, they kind of know he's there. He's in the slither of smoke, which GB have. So they don't see him exactly. So he could have walked back by now. But Kisa, if he still gets hit by this fissure. SF doubts have raises now, so they have enough damage to find the kill from where he's at. Is it not Kaiser? Is it Kaiser? It's Kieser. I don't know, like... If it was Kaiser, it would be like K-A-I. Yeah, but Kieser just sounds... I know, weird. Real <laughs> off. Uh, well, we can call him Kaiser. Like, I'm happy with... Kaiser sounds so much more epic. Kieser says... It's like... We'll ask him. Um, SVG, by the way, is actually savage. Yeah. I, uh, I asked him last night. He's like, nah, it could be both, but I really like Savage. Sounds boss. Fly's having a great time on this top lane. Skylark can't get anything. Like, he's forced all the way back. He's got six tangos, and uh, he'll actually trigger the south now. But this is that one-on-one -on -one duel, which I always like to see. The the safe lane support of Dire side versus the range, uh, the, the off laner of the Radiant, who normally comes out on top. In this case, it's Silencer by my Landslide. He's got level 2 really early, but he's got to be careful. Double boar is very strong. Mm -hmm. Be careful, fly friend. <laughs> and again, no tails coming over. They curse him up again. Just try and force out the Beastmaster and the oh, Vigil Block. Off. Oh, this is troublesome. Crit this will be beast. first blood. He comes in at the perfect time, and the first blood goes the way of the Ember Spirit. Really well played by Crit, just being able to trap him off there. He didn't know that Crit was exactly going to be in that position. Because uh, Crit was just moving around, and... Well. He, may, he maybe should have. Like, did Crit come through the dire jungle? Because yeah. if, if he didn't, then they would have come under the Observer Ward. Yeah, he was really smart about it. He played that perfectly. Or pretty much as close to perfect as you can get. This mid matchup, though, is going to be rough for Storm eventually. Uh, the SF, though, opts to skip the bottle, actually, and go for the wand first, which I question. Like, you can't trade regen very effectively, I think, in this matchup. And how many wand charges are you really going to get from Static Remnant spam? A lot. <laughs> That's, but but more more than what bottle will give you. Uh, now, they're now going to go for the fissure, and well, he could commit the raises, but there's not much not much uh, um, reason to do so when the bottle's already coming out in the courier. The storm actually has absurd farm, Toby. If you want to know, rate wise, like look at his. Uh, yeah, I see twenty one four against a ten three. Yeah, 
Miracle's uh, actually just missing a lot of CS right now. I should actually just find you games where the Storm Spirit is completely trashed his lane. I, lo I love to be relevant in 2015, so uh -huh. I'm down to just keep casting Storm games. I, I saw a... Like, we actually had a Storm Spirit game last night in the um, ESL Americas. Yeah. And uh, it was something along the lines of 45 CS to 7 CS in the space of 6 minutes or 7 minutes. Oh, I would love to cast that it game. It was crazy. And he was just, he was taking stacks as well. Yeah, my boy, dude. Uh, it's... Storm, my boy. My, I, maybe Earth Spirit does have to be taken off that number one peg as OP. Nah, because then he'll get nerfed. <laughs> he should get nerfed. Oh, you mean Storm get nerfed? Yeah. No. Yeah, he Storm should. doesn't need a nerf. He should get nerfed. It's just the meta, man. It's, Searing, all, it's all in the business. Searing Chain's up on top. No, Tal just keeps trying to burn him down with a Flame Guard. That's a level one Beastmaster. Yep. He's about to hit level two, however. As he'll be able to leech out the experience in the wild wing. Actually, no, he's going to back up. Fly doesn't doesn't even so want good. level two. I mean, Fly is level three and a half as a support hero. And he's not even stealing that much from Nortel. Like, Nortel still managed to crack almost level six already. They're playing this lane. They've got that, that, that fanatic synergy. <laughs> are we really going to call it fanatic synergy? Well, they are the old, the old pair from Fnatic. Yeah, Honey should just become their coach. Um, it's working nicely. Oh, what? All of a sudden, SF is completely caught up in CS. He was 11 down before. Uh, top lane Fissure. There goes the kill on the Dazzle, and more intelligence coming the way of Fly. He's stolen four intelligence already. There's one other thing which I did request of, uh, of Volvo, please, is to be able to see who has actually lost intelligence during the game. I guess it makes things considerably easier, but at the same time, uh, it's kind of easy-ish to track. Beastmaster as well as Dazzle have lost two. <laughs> yeah. They're the only two that have died so far. Beastmaster really can't afford to lose intelligence, though. Like, he starts with 16 base, yep. or 18 at this point, uh, and he barely has enough to throw out <laughs> all of his animals. He can't throw out the zoo and the axis, man. Especially if he has a desire to uh, go into a mech, man, me 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 meander. Barely. Oh, the cooldown's going to kill him! He did all the work with the Rocket Barrage, and Mumiana realized with Surge running out, he couldn't get away in time. So the call down from the Jarrah, able to find himself a kill, and finally GB get themselves on the board. Yeah, Madara Dota, man. Well played by him, and the Storm Spirit is just going to go for this bottom rune, because he knows that the Darkseer is dead. His bottle's coming in. This is a pretty good rune. This is what you're going to call a kill rune. These are the type of runes that you want to be able to gank with if you can, if the opportunity should arise. Yep. Uh... The only downside, I guess, about this rune is that he doesn't have full mana and he doesn't have a TP, more importantly. But you probably grab, like, a TP at some point. It's not that big of a deal. He's going for the soul ring instead of treads. He's going to farm. Okay. He's meant to just farm jungle. Unless that's meant to be the Yule set to rushed. Nah. Soul ring's just too damn good to bypass for a storm. Really, like, so many heroes. Oh, he's actually just going to pop the DD for this. I kind of don't like this, because he had enough time on his DD, and he's got enough bottle charges to be able to do this cleanly. I would have preferred the DD be used just to go for a kill. Maybe he just doesn't, doesn't feel the confidence. Oh yeah, if you don't know too, like the uh, the pathing bug with the skeletons. <laughs> I still can't believe this. The skeletons don't lose aggro. They'll chase you to the ends of the earth. Oh really? Yep. That's pretty clowny. They, they will just keep following you. There's also uh, some other bugs with pathing, uh, which comes with like Chikiro's liquid fire. Where if you liquid fire a creep wave and it keeps ticking damage, even if you're like fog of war and far enough away, they still keep following you because they're taking the tick damage. They're pissed off. Yeah. You just burn their land. I think it's pretty fair that they try to hit you with their sticks in mid. Okay. Shadow okay, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way the storm should have been there without his bottle. Like, he had 200 HP and he just got high ground stunned and then raised once. Like, I'm so surprised after the Ancients, he just didn't go back to base. Like, what was the point of standing there in the lane? He might have just felt... Like, they have a ward that's watching this. The funnier thing is, though, this Radiant Ward, which is here, uh, it was down before the Dire Ward was placed. And Earthshaker made the walk. Like, he... It was very, very obvious when Crit threw the ward down. He walks up, plants the ward, and then walks back. But the supports didn't see it. So they didn't ping out the fact the OBS was there. And the high ground stun was just too easy. Moomiander, we're gonna go call down again. He's expecting it. He goes into the trees. <laughs> he won't be able to survive again. The attack from Jara will do the work. He actually attacked into the tower with a flat cannon. Coming in very deep, the stun will be there to stop Fly's instant chase after this. As Lena 
It's managed to find itself a haste rune, so it's okay for her to stay behind. The warding battle is being completely destroyed right now. Like, the Golden Boys is getting out warded pretty hard. Like, this high ground ward advantage that they have is pretty significant as your mid laner. Like, the fact that they were able to kill the Storm Spirit, who was mainly focusing on farm, and uh, get it for your Shadow Fiend, especially when the Storm hits level 6, uh, he should be really hard to gank at that point. Like, the Shadow Fiend should have to be in a position where he has to raise twice or, if not, three times to kill him. But you should never just one Fissure raise dead. Yep. Now the SF has such a huge advantage. Like, this is one of the more snowball-y matchups in general that you're going to run into almost every single time. Is that the SF, if he gets a kill set up for him whatsoever, yep. just rolls the game. We saw that last game too, right? Yeah, we did. Until he DC'd. Yep, we did. <laughs> well, things happen. Everybody yeah. knows. But the principle is still the same, at least. Exactly. Uh, and Miracle's now, like, he's so far, he's, uh, he's uh, almost 1,200 uh, ahead of the Ember Spirit, under 10 minutes into the game. All right, that's the balance shift. And the Ember, uh, sorry, not the Ember Spirit, the Storm Spirit. The Ember Spirit's still finding a crap ton of farm himself. Like, Don't Tell's not really being contested. He's got one assist, one kill. That's great for him. And he's able to find solo experience, and no one's pressuring him. Like, the Beastmaster is still level 4. Like, we don't have the the pressure at all of, of his raw coming out. Because then maybe they could do a little bit of a rotation, like a smoke gank with Alina. Get a quick pick off, and then just get the hell out. It's just because Fly has been able to zone him out so effectively. Yep. It sounds there's one of the better heroes of being able to do that. The thing you kind of have to worry about a lot of times when you play Silencer as a support is if you have a hero like Earthshaker or Darkseer offlaning, or even Tusk, uh, one support comes in. And it doesn't matter what level they are, they'll kill the silencer support because he's so squishy. Mm -hmm. But in this game, when you've got like a Dazzle support and a Lina that can't really get set up if you don't have Roar, uh, it's going to be pretty hard to punish this pretty greedy pick. And it's paying off really well. Like He's almost level 6 already. Like He's just about to hit it after this wave potentially. Uh, Shaker just threw down an, an Observer Ward. It could be seen though, that range creep can actually kill it if he wants to. But they'll let the Dazzle come up and do it instead. So they can't block the stack from happening. And this Observe Wall, which is on the cliff side for GB, is seeing the rotation of crit. But just because they see it doesn't mean they can do anything about it. Like, no Tell is just too big, and having Fly behind him, he's got Global Silence 11 minutes into the game. Like, they know this T1 town belongs to them. If GB fight this, they're just gonna lose. Yeah, if I were... If I were Monkey Business right now, I'd just be playing aggressively, because you know you have oh, a lot of courier. advantages. Courier, Courier. He's gonna... Nah, nah, one more hit! The Totem Stomp wasn't enough. So the Energy Booster will be able to get down to the Storm Spirit. And he's going to stick with the Bloodstone. We're not... We're not going to go into that Yules. Okay, this is a pretty weird way to build a tooth. Like, this is old school as it gets. Going for the Arcane Boots instead of the Treads. Uh, this is like a zero kill potential storm. Like, TPing in does nothing for fights anymore. Pretty much what your hero is going to rely on at this point, Toby, is just... Farm, farm, farm. But maybe they just feel like they're just so far behind that this is their only option. But then I started checking out stacks, and I'm not seeing any stacks inside the Radiant Jungle. So he can't just flash farm at No-Tell. Okay, he's really getting on the Beastmaster's nerves. Chasing after him, now he can go for the Searing Chains. He's waiting out a little bit longer, as now the Dazzle will arrive. The Searing Chains actually going to catch both of them, and he attacks into the Dazzle. The one hero he knows he can kill off because... He's going to get both. Oh my lord. Uh, <laughs> Nortel knew he could get away with it, and they actually lose another one. The Lena dies on bottom, Moon Meander attempt the TP out, he dies again to the Gyrocopter. The only three kills have come to the Gyro, and every single time it's Moon Meander. They're gonna get a top kill though, for sure. Uh, the global isn't expended, I think, but at the same time, it's still a fairly decent trade there. Like, getting the Storm some kills, obviously you don't want to lose... I mean, every hero that wasn't a core just died there. Yeah, uh, and at some point the Beastmaster has to get something out of the laning phase, and I thought he was a pretty good pickup for the mid game, but I didn't anticipate his lane being this impossibly hard for him. If he was six, maybe two minutes ago, or uh, he was in that type of position, maybe. And they've got ancient stacks, which usually are reserved for him, but it looks like the gyrocopter instead is going to take it. So, Golden Boys is going to be incredibly core heavy this game. Oh. But that also means now the monkeys, like their cores are looking very good themselves and their team fight is still great. The only thing they're kind of missing is having that Earthshaker 1 with Echo Slam and 2 Blink. 
Like if they have that, like even these cores being heavy, the lockdown control you get from the ES. Now you might consider like buying a BKB over on this gyrocopter, but he may not get it off in time. It's kind of funny to also watch Miracles build on this SF. I say funny is the wrong word, but like going for an SMY, he's really ready to fight early on. As opposed to going for something more like what we saw in the previous game, we have that Yule Scepter. It's destroyed like Yules to blow up. I think it's a good build though for the stats. You can survive against the storm. And if, as weird as it sounds, a lot of storms sometimes will overextend with mana. And you might think you can't chase them down, but you can oh, kill coming. them easily. Fissure, global silence, so we can't ball lightning away. Miracle, actually not even using the rays. And this is all happening at the same time as Madara is taking out the entire stack. Oh, no tail at top. Wait, it, it, like, uh, Ion shell plus flame guard. <laughs> what do you do? And now, <laughs> he's just everywhere across the map. Like, he jumps down at the Radiant Jungle, the mid lane's being pushed in, there's no T1 tower there anymore. The SF is in the middle of a bit of a sandwich, they're gonna start with a roar, but Lena, Laguna Blade, it should be enough damage, Miracle? No, there's one charge, it's, he's gonna turn, releases the ulti, he's gonna tickle on yeah, maybe next mad. time. And, uh, okay, yeah, one raise will finish the job, again though, Miracle, not wanting to pop that. But it's, it's the Storm Spirit who's, who died previously, they're the leader to follow it up. And the SF who takes both Raw and Laguna Blade, yet you still cannot kill him. That's the strength of this SNY build. Like, this very, very stat-heavy build. Nearly impossible to kill at this point. He tanks up so much damage. Like, when he switches his strength treads, like, 1400, nearly 1500 HP. And then you've got the wand to work with as well. Mm -hmm. On top of the 14 armor, you're, there's almost nothing that can kill that in the early game. There just yep. isn't. And, I mean, monkey, monkey business is just kind of rolling this game right now. Yeah. That um, was the first Beastmaster roar that we just saw, too. That's what makes it even sadder. That's the first one you get, and you combine it with a lean light. That was meant to be your kill combo. And if they found any other hero other than SF, maybe the Ember Spirit would have been a little bit more difficult for them as well, depending on his Flame Guard time. Yeah. But, like, anyone else apart from SF, and they would have got it. And now, they get Nagus the Immortal into the hands of the SF. Is he actually... Like, I see the Mithril Hammer to start with, so I'm assuming it will just be a standard BKB. But is this a game where you may think you can get away with, like... I know we don't see it, no one's ever picked it up. Don't so say you, Deso. You, you, you can shut me down if you want to. Uh, that's what I was thinking. No, he's only getting it, Toby, because <laughs> he's got full item slots in an Aegis. So the yeah. BKB isn't necessary at this phase. Like, he doesn't need the Ogre Club like he normally would, just because of how far ahead he is. Yeah. And let's be real here. He is incredibly far ahead right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I will always be a Deso advocate. Will you? Yeah, always. It was, it was part of core on my Nature's Prophet build. Bottom tower it's just the way, man. I thought it was mech into trying to type level up 25 and dying to a top lane bot. That is... Kiss my ass. <laughs> Ah, oh, never one, forget. In one minute, in one minute, you can understand all of that. Stupid ass video. I can't believe I've made that. <laughs> never have released it as well. All right. Yeah, so if, if you ever want to learn Dota from me, don't. Unless you want to grief your teammates, never learn Dota from me. That's simple. I mean, Toby, I learned a lot out of that Nature's Prophet video. <laughs> just, just go talk to me. I learned one. what the command was to level up 20 to 25. Oh my god, just, just... It was useful. It was four years ago! You know, I told Cap this, I was like... <laughs> it's four plenty years ago. It's just as important to learn what you shouldn't do as it is what you should. It's part of the learning process. That is... It true, yeah. This top, okay, they just got two tier two towers. They, they, the can't, they canceled the TP. This is pretty absurd right now. They're they just gonna keep going? Yeah. Wow. Yep. This they, is confidence. They're actually TPing the Darkseer back, and Mumiander canceled it halfway through. One, because maybe the cooldown was right in his TP's position, but like, they, I think they understood just how much they damage. They don't have Glyph. <laughs> nope. <laughs> they blew it on the tier two tower. So just do it. Okay, no. this. That was an absurd amount of damage. They took bottom tier two and the mid tier two. And they got that uh, they got that mid tower to almost high ground position, and by that I mean being able to get this tower to 245 damage. It's not taking it down necessarily, of course, but it allows your next pressure move to be so much more powerful. Mm -hmm. Like being able to get to the high ground without having that tower in the way yep. means that you can spread out and fan and take a really proper fight without having to be mass call downed. 
and the position which Monkeys is in right now, like easily winning a team fight, like that is possible for them. And then with the player advantage, you just push. Like that tower will take a grand total of maybe five seconds maximum to get through. And looks like Notel is looking for that pick off. Searing chains on the storm spread. He's still got a jump available, and he will in fact use it. Should keep our eyes on that Aegis timer when we hit the 22:30. The Aegis will be gone. So SF right now is just playing like he's got a second life because he does. He's got a BKB completed too. Yeah. You can't kill that hero. And he's got a haste drain in his bottle. <laughs> they might just decide to go for this right now. Like, why not? Storm Spirit? Hello, that's a long jump up. Crit is going to start with the Echo Slam. He's got four one charges available. They'll give him another Totem Stomp, but Storm Spirit's already going to find the kill. But Storm Spirit's on the other side of the map and about to TP back. He's up to nine Bloodstone charges with that kill. But Miracle's already starting. Like, they just want the tower. Force GB back. Still no fortification for such a long time. So they take out first the tower. <laughs> take out a boar as well. They're beating into that range racks. It really just looks too easy. This phase of the game, it kind of is. And you get a hand of Midas now, also built for fly. It's coming down a bot lane. So you're gonna you're gonna get a higher level up in global silence quicker. And they're, are they turning they're turning around to fight? They're hoping someone's gonna, gonna push out a little bit too far in the lane. Or then again, that is still a little bit too far if you got the searing chains. But uh, a little bit of a missed time there from Nortel. He's getting pretty massive too. He's gone for all of these side utility items. He's gone for the boots of travel, the drums, the Aquila, and he hasn't been punished for it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. He hasn't had to go for that uh, necessary, you know, when you go for the treads and you, you just immediately go for the battle fury because things are going out of hand. His team is affording him the ability to just go for all of these greedy items and they're going to go for a gank here at top, but uh, you absolutely have it's... to get this one. He's going to see the Beastmaster here in a second, instantly jumps away. You have to just set that up better. You almost have to cut through the tree line to get the raw. Like, that would probably be the only other way you'd get close enough for it, because he doesn't have any items. Like, this is a Beastmaster with brown boots and a medallion. Like, that's, that's all Skylark has. This, 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 isn't, this isn't items. This isn't a hero. Fly just did such a good job of zoning him out for No-Tail. Yeah. No-Tail pretty much had a free lane. And that was just because Fly did such a good job of being able to one on one zone him out. Your best Eagle level silence being committed. This is the way they can bring down uh, Kaiser. <laughs> As, yep, Spirit jumps in. The Fissure hits perfectly. No tells on the wrong side of that Fissure, and Storm will just have to commit suicide. No other choice. It's better than being perma stunned up. True, but now he's down to six Bloodstone charges. I think maybe actually there might have been a chance where he survives because the Ember went on the wrong side of the Fissure. But you just need to get a little bit further to the side. Yeah, and if Crit has the Echo Slam, maybe. But we saw him use it already. Yep. He used it up against the Storm on the top lane, so Storm will <coughs> definitely be aware of that. Like, there was two seconds left of the global, and he still had... There was two seconds left of the global, and he still had about more than half of his health. Mm -hmm. It's not like the Ember deals an insane amount of damage or anything like that. Well, not yet. Once he's got that Battle Fury, then... It's going to start to amplify it a little bit more. And they're actually moving in with crit. They want to put the Blink Dagger to use, and there you go. Blink into Echo Slam with the follow-ups on the Shallow Grave will keep Storm Spirit alive. They need more control on him, and they just don't have it. But No-Tell keeping up. Slide of Fist is available. Cannot get the combo because the Searing Chains was still on cooldown. And he'll TP himself away to safety. Actually, he's going to TP up to top lane to try and stop this push. Radiant leaving a Spirit on bottom lane so he can rejoin his teammates later on. They probably just wait for the next Roshan and then decide to go for the high ground. Uh, you can go for the mid push after this. You've got to be a blink BKB completed on your SF, almost level 16. The Ember Spirit almost has a Battle Fury. Like, you're just waiting on item timings most of the time, Toby, just <laughs> to hit, like, crucial uh, timings. you got a Glimmer Cape on your Darkseer, a Blink Dagger on your Earthshaker. It feels like I'm just reading off items left and right, but it means that <laughs> there's nothing else that you're waiting for that's inherently going to change the huge fight that's about to happen, whereas mm -hmm. Golden Boys need all the time in the world to farm. Yeah, it's like you're selling my job. I meant to read out the obvious. A... No tell. I got a little bit of vision of Dazzle at that point. Storm Spirit's gonna jump over, and they go after the silencer. Just wanted to do a little bit of dewarning crit with a fidget control. They might better get fly out this one. Storm Spirit, noob. Now we get that last attack in, but No tell comes back to the fight. They vac back in the Dazzle. So it's a one support for one support. Roshan's still a little bit off. 
No. Does it show for you when he's about to spawn? Roshan? No, it's, it's the bug. This is what I was talking about before. It's yeah. bugged. So, yeah, you're seeing two minutes, but he's been actually dead for six, I believe, now. It'll, it'll come up at some point. There you go. One minute 51. Oh, there we go. So we have to put it into our minds. All right, so around the 25 minute mark, yeah, just that's when you'll 25. see. You'll probably see monkey business go for the high ground. This is about as strong as the power curve as it gets at this point. Mm -hmm. And it won't take him long to kill a Roshan either. Like, you're bad hit. Uh, yeah, in fact, you got a level 3 Requiem of Souls now available for monkeys. Like, their team fight is ridiculous. And the level 2 wall is up for Darkseer. The only thing he's missing is four points up in VAC. The Echo Slam's coming off cooldown as well, so they've got that to work with. Like, at least, at least Beastmaster has something now. He's got a four stuff. So Skylark might be able to get himself in range to get a good roar initiation off. He has a beat, he has a jump too. The problem right now though is his build is kind of all in. He's got no levels, no farm. He's but just he, fallen behind. But he's got no option. Like he, he has to do this. I agree. Just what? kind of a making the best out of a bad situation. Yeah. But I don't see the observer ward, however. He didn't walk down far enough to see it. So they'll get, they'll get rid of the uh, sentry ward at least and put down their own obs. And they check Roshan, but, well, okay. <laughs> Jar Jarocopter was underneath the tier 1 tower by himself. He had BKB. Earthshaker is the counter BKB hero. Yep. They're going to go down mid and force the buyback. Like, but it's a Gyrocopter at this phase of the game. They don't even... This this move is so brilliant because you, you go for the forcing buyback. But if he does that, then you just go for the Roshan, and then in the game two minutes later, this is such an awkward position to be in. You might actually just have to give up Brax. Yep. Because if you use the buyback here, you won't have it for the Aegis fight that matters. They're actually trying to creep skip it out. Storm Spirit got in behind the tier two tower inside of the creep skip. Now the TPs are coming in from the Dire, and it's no tail arriving. And the range rank is already gone. Like one attack from the SF that finishes the job. The raw is going to be over on the Ember Spirit. Still no buyback from the Jaro. With 17 seconds left, he's going to do it and TP right to the walls of front lines. But the BKB is there from the SF. The Requiem might be down. Moomyander on the run out of here. And they've got the buyback as well as the kill on Lena. But the Storm Spirit, a long jump out. Finds himself a Bloodstone charge. And it's looking for a kill. The Silencer is the man, but the Fissure Block is there. And Silencer, he'll be able to TP himself out in time. Flies out to safety. So they disengage, only losing the Darkseer. But they force the buyback. Yeah, now here's the problem is that you've got Guardian Griefs completed on the Darks here. The Shadow Fiend is still alive and strong. Uh, he had to use his BKB for that one, but this Roshan, all right, this is the pretty big pivotal moment for them right now. Because no yeah, if you don't get this Roshan, you kind of just lose the game. Yep. Then you would give up a high ground Roshan, and this is going to be brutal right now. All the Darks here illusions are coming in to help him out. And Zavadara uh, forced up actually in deeper into Roshan. It's no tells in a oh, lot no of trouble. Dead. The cooldown's going to connect. The Storm Spirit's the man to find the kill. Is that fresh orchid that came up for him just before the fight. But they'll buy back and they really just want to win this. Like, it doesn't matter if they, if, if they have to expend a little bit of gold for it. Jarakup is going to run in. He can't deny himself off to Roshan. In fact, Ember Spirit ensures the kill by getting that side of Fist while Storm Spirit has to suicide himself with the Bloodstone. They're on the chase for more. And they might be able to find it. They're after maybe next time. Spirit forward, side of fist searing chain. Boom. Got it. And then, okay. Miracle. Miracle. Oh. Miracle. <laughs> that looked a lot more complicated than it needed to be. It was. As Crit's chasing after this poor little Dazzle. He's got four one charges. And Crit's got all the damage in the world. So Dazzle is down for the count. Now it'll be monkeys going in for Roshan. That's just... I kind of like that maneuver by them to go for the Roshan. And they were even able to kill No-Tail on the back of their storm having that Orchid. But at the same time, the major issue right there and what was unable to happen is just you don't have enough firepower. But it was almost like a force situation. Oh, Storm. Long jump. All right inside oh, Roshan. The wall is down. Shadow Fiend picks up the Aegis. Killed by the Dire and Storm is down for the count. 40 seconds on the sideline. That was not the dream. That was not the dream. He, again have to go for it. Yeah. Can't give up the Aegis on the SF. You can't yeah. kill him twice. It's I, I'm not I'm not passing judgment, man. I'm not passing judgment. That is just really, really, really rough. Like they're just in a bad position. Yeah, he's gonna go for the rune. Oh, it's even a haste rune. Gonna have to give up his bottle to Moon Meander. Wow, it's such a like, just the position that Monkeys is in at the moment. They can do so much. 
and to screw it up, like, it's so difficult for them. Because they're just so farmed. Like, items will actually help them win this more than anything else. That's a fully completed Eye of Scotty. Yep. With an Aegis team all to boot. The BKBs are being used so much it's down to 8 seconds. You also know that the Gyrocopter has no buyback now. And more importantly, the Storm has used his pocket to die too. And he can't have money. Yep. They know that he's died 3 times in a pretty short period of time. And he bought that Orchid. So now you're in a position where you're pretty much defending with nothing up. Yep. There's no buyback on anybody that needs it. The Beastmaster doesn't have enough farm to go for the split push. It looks like they're going for the trade though. Like that creep wave's already reaching the tier 3 tower, so monkeys. But then again, you're up against an Ember Spirit. Like he just leaves the Spirit in the lane, side of Fist down the wave, and then you've lost all your momentum. And the SF's already arriving. He can do this solo. He actually doesn't need friends, but it's always good to have some. They're gonna, they gotta be careful too, because if they get chains TP'd, um, they're. TP's cancelled through the chains. Yep. Like, that could just end the game for them right now, and this is going to be a free Rex, almost 100%. Well, luckily, uh, chains is on cooldown right now for GB. And Monkeys isn't pressuring the issue. I thought they might just, like, rotate themselves down a bot lane uh, inside the base. Uh, they don't have a TP completed yet on No-Tail, or his boots travel are still on uh, cooldown. Okay. So you just wait it out and go with the creep wave. Like, there's no reason not to meet the creep wave there. You're just unnecessarily dangering yourself. Makes sense. Miracle's having a great old time. He's done pretty well this game. When it comes to farm, he's unmatched right now in this game. Yeah. And his net worth is just... Okay, he's almost got 19,000 net worth to the almost 14k of the gyro. And now you see him actually push to the 19k as they push up. And what do you do here? Like, you, you want to bring him back. Your weave is only... Okay, connected on Mumiander as well as Shadow Fiend. So you remove a little bit of his armor, but he doesn't care. He's got Nagus the Immortal, even if he dies at the moment. Like, you force out these abilities, and then you just come back in later. It's um, just an awkward position to be in. You don't want to overcommit if you're Golden Boys, but at the same time, without any buybacks available, you can't really get into a, an ideal fight. They caught Madarara out. Crit. He really wants to jump. Without the Crete Wave, he's not as open to doing this. But if you can find an easy pick off, you'll go for it. The Lena and the Jara right on top of each other as the Storm. A huge jump out to Fissure though. Gonna make it really difficult and Crit gets the Echo Slam. He controls the Jara. The cooldown still does this work, but not enough of it. As Miracle will be bringing down this Gyrocopter. The Shallow Grave can't protect him long enough. The buy that comes from the Beastmaster, because he never even got his roar off during the fight. He's lost all of his friends, and he's about to lose his base. Monkeys is just ravaging it. Storm comes out again. Who's he's he gonna go for it. <laughs> okay. That wasn't the plan. <laughs> he came all the way out and got and the global silence triggered. It doesn't even matter though. Like yeah. Fly held onto it for so long, but they're still gonna lose two sets of racks here. Uh, they lost the mid one. The Radiant's bottom one goes down now too. The Shadow Fiend, the rich get richer and GG. Yeah, GG. They know. Yeah. Like their Beastmaster, I think, just hit level nine at 31 minutes into the game. They know that the time for some sort of crazy comeback is gone. Yeah, that was that was never going to get any better for him. So, monkeys, come out on top. Quality game for them. We'll get to have ourselves a break as we go into our last game of the night. And we do two game series here for the group stages of the defense. You can find all the details for the tournament at the-defense.com, or you can go to your wonderful website, joindota.com, to find out all matches across all competitions. And we're streaming out multiple stuff tonight. We already had our MLG stuff early tonight. We have ESL going on right now uh, with Durka over in the other studio. And, uh, of course, you can stay here right on our Joindota Red channel for game number two.